In this tutorial video, we will create and analyze a Dakota Global Sampling Study for sensitivity analysis purposes. We'll pick up where we left off in the sensitivity analysis introduction video, using the same example simulation model, the cantilever beam. By the end of this video, you will have run your first sampling-based sensitivity analysis study in Dakota, visualized the results, and generated output data files that can be used in follow-on analyses. For sampling-based sensitivity analysis, Dakota will generate a global space-filling design over the input variables, evaluate the simulation at each point in the design, and calculate statistics on the corresponding simulation responses. A Latin hypercube design is perhaps most common for Dakota global sensitivity analysis. This scatter plot shows two-dimensional projections of a representative sample over the variables in the cantilever beam example. In the case of the cantilever beam example, all seven parameters will be varied jointly in each sample point in the Latin hypercube. In the absence of intimate knowledge of how the simulation's parameters map to the responses, we usually recommend 10 times d samples, but with a minimum of 2 times d samples, where d is the number of variables. So for the cantilever example, we recommend between 14 and 70 samples, as there are 7 variables. Note that each sample point contains a value for all 7 parameters. One can think of a sample point as a vector of size d. For realistic applications, the number of samples in the design is often constrained by computational resources, although in some cases it is affordable to run far more than 10 times d model evaluations, often with more accurate results. Let's pick up where we left off with our Dakota input file from the previous video. For the method block, let's use Dakota's sampling method. We will specify LHS as the sample type using a combination of the keywords sample underscore type and LHS. As discussed earlier, we will take 70 samples using the keyword samples and a value of 70. As the cantilever simulator is computationally inexpensive, it would be possible to generate many more samples, and you may wish to later explore the effect of increasing the number of samples on the results. For study repeatability, specify a positive integer seed for Dakota's random number generator. If omitted, Dakota will generate a different random sample each time it's executed, which could be useful in assessing variability due to the sample design. If you'd like to spot check your Dakota input file at this point, it should resemble the input file at this location in the Dakota install directory. One last thing before we run Dakota. We will need to generate specific output files to gather data from. This will allow us to generate plots using the Dakota GUI. In the environment block at the top of your input file, add the keywords tabular underscore data and tabular underscore data underscore file with a specific name for the generated tabular data file. Dakota will output its evaluations, that is, the variable values and corresponding simulation responses, to this tabular data file for use in other statistics or plotting packages but most notably for importing into the next video, where we'll cover the topic of SOBOL indices. Let's also add an HDF5 database as another Dakota output file. This can be achieved with the keywords results underscore output and HDF5. Now, let's run Dakota. When the study is run, Dakota will generate a design of experiments with 70 samples, and then execute the cantilever beam simulator at the variable values specified by each sample. As the samples and sensitivity analysis methods are all generated a priori and do not depend on the results of other samples, the evaluations can all be conducted concurrently or in batches using Dakota's local or MPI parallelism. When complete, Dakota should generate a tabular data file that looks something like this. You should also have a Dakota underscore results.h5 file in your project. Now let's generate plots for this output data. A matrix of scatter plots is a useful visual aid to understand a global sensitivity analysis. To create an input-output scatter plot matrix in Dakota GUI, right-click on the generated tabular data file and choose Chartreuse, then New Plot Template from this file. Select Scatter Plot Matrix as your template type. For simple projects with one tabular data file and one Dakota input file, there is no need to configure the controls shown in the plot data group, as it has automatically selected your single set of generated tabular data. From the drop-down, choose subset A to subset B, 
This option allows us to plot variables on one axis and responses on the other. Choose all variables for the x-axis and all responses for the y-axis. We can make our plot easier to read by checking Draw Linear Regression and Text on Outer Axes Only. Now click OK. In this dialog, the Plot Window Manager, you will see a preview of how your scatter plot will be laid out in the bottom left portion of the dialog. This dialog provides many flexible controls for arranging data in your plot, but for this tutorial we will leave things as they are currently. Click Plot to view your generated scatter plot matrix. From this plot matrix, we observe fairly strong trends for some variable response pairs. For example, take a look at the geometric parameters W, T, and L. Also, note that some responses don't seem to depend at all on some parameters. For example, the equation for mass doesn't depend at all on E, X, or Y, and the plot shows essentially noise, that is, no trend. There is also evidence of potential nonlinear relationships, such as that which exists between the input L, length, and the output displacement. Now let's take a look at some of Dakota's correlation coefficients. Correlation coefficients quantify the strength and direction of a linear relationship between a variable and a response. They can be helpful in ranking the relative importance of variables, or identifying those that definitely have a strong effect. Correlation coefficients are displayed in the Dakota console output, but are also stored in the requested HDF5 output file. To visualize the correlation coefficients, you can make a tornado plot, which is essentially a set of horizontal bar charts arranged by absolute value, or you could create a colored correlation matrix. Let's start with tornado plots. Right-click on the generated HDF5 file and choose Chartreuse, then Plot Template from this file. Select Bar Chart Variable Comparison as your template type. When pulling data from an HDF5 file, we need to tell the Dakota GUI which HDF dataset to use. So let's click on the Get Data button. In the next dialog, simply select Simple Correlations from the HDF Target Object drop-down menu. The GUI will automatically locate this dataset in your HDF database file. Now click OK. Choose Horizontal from the Canvas Orientation drop-down, and Horizontal again from the Bar Orientation drop-down. For Tornado Plot Sorting, check the Sort Bars by Size checkbox. Click OK, and then click Plot in the Plot Window Manager dialog to view your generated correlation plot. Typically, simple correlations with an absolute value greater than 0.7 are considered strong while those greater than 0.2 might be important. Small values of correlation do not necessarily mean a variable is unimportant, as there could be nonlinear effects. For example, this scatter plot of a function with an overall cortic trend has near zero correlation, yet there is clearly an important trend. Dakota also computes simple rank correlations, which can be useful for responses varying over orders of magnitude. Rank correlations have another use. They can indicate relationships between variables and responses that are nonlinear and monotonic, that is, always increasing or always decreasing. That said, we imagine that in most practical situations, any pair of factors that has a strong monotonic relationship, and hence a high rank correlation, will also have a high simple correlation. Partial correlation coefficients control for effects of other variables and may underrepresent the influence of a particular variable, but can still be useful for identifying large contributors. If you would rather visualize these correlations as colored matrices instead of tornado plots, you can follow a similar approach for creating these plots by selecting Correlation Coefficients Table from the Templates dropdown in the Plotting Templates dialog. Here are some examples of what these plots look like. In the next video, we will post-process the generated samples to compute SOBOL indices via variance-based decomposition.